Recently, Shark Tank's Barbara Corcoran endorsed a new and innovative shoulder product called the InSpace Balloon Spacer. In this video, she raves about how fast she recovered from her severe shoulder condition thanks to this unique device made by Stryker. Although it has been used in Europe for over a decade, the FDA only recently cleared this device, meant for use in rotator cuff tears, of the shoulder. Since then, the InSpace Balloon Spacer has been making waves in the shoulder community. As I mentioned, the recent endorsement by Shark Tank celebrity Barbara Corcoran has also raised public awareness about its efficacy and promise for patients with very large rotator cuff tears. This device is quite unique and unlike any other options for this painful condition of the shoulder. So what is the InSpace Balloon Spacer? Who would benefit from this treatment? Are there any downsides? How fast is the recovery from this versus other surgeries? And what are the outcomes? In this video, we will answer all of these questions in depth. Welcome to the Shoulder and Arm Health channel where we discuss the latest and best in shoulder and arm care. So what is it? The InSpace device is a balloon spacer meant to be placed between the humeral head and the acromion process in patients with chronic rotator cuff tears. Normally, this space is occupied by the intact rotator cuff muscles. InSpace is meant to be used in cases of irreparable rotator cuff tears. In that condition, this space collapses allowing the humerus to rub against this bone up here called the acromion. The InSpace balloon is designed to hold this space open and it acts as a cushion for the two previously grinding bone surfaces. Who would benefit from this device? The device is only intended for use in people who have a very large chronic rotator cuff tear. As a brief anatomy review, the shoulder has a deep layer of muscles called the rotator cuff. The four rotator cuff muscles initiate the upward elevation of the shoulder. The most common injury to the rotator cuff is a tear of the upper tendon called the supraspinatus tendon. When this tendon tears, it is often repairable for a while. But after a period of years, the tendon retracts inwards and loses its normal elasticity. Without any intervening rotator cuff tendon above it, the humeral head can start to raise upwards and rub against the roof bone called the acromion. This often feels like a grinding pain as the shoulder raises upward. The lack of balance in the shoulder also causes some patients to feel like their shoulder is paralyzed because they can't physically raise the arm without help from the other arm. Their shoulder is not actually paralyzed, it just lacks a balancing force to keep the shoulder in its socket when the large deltoid muscle pulls the arm upward. As a result, the humeral head raises upward out of the socket unopposed. We can often recognize this problem on simple x-rays where we see what is called a high riding humeral head. Since we can't repair these long-standing chronic tears, various other solutions have been suggested, including just repairing part of the tear and covering the gap with a thick dermal patch. Tendon transfers have also been suggested and placing a reversed artificial joint. While all of these options propose methods to recenter the ball back down in its sockets, they all have some unique concerns and risks. In some cases, the recovery time can be quite lengthy as well. For example, after a rotator cuff repair or a tendon transfer, we restrict patients from actively moving the shoulder for the first three months. That's because we know that it takes about three months for repaired tendons to grow roots and connect to the bone. Keep in mind that also, sometimes these tendons fail to connect at all. That's where the InSpace balloon offers a unique solution. As opposed to tendon transfers or dermal capsule reconstructions, the InSpace balloon does not attempt to repair any tendons or connect any tissue to the bone. Instead, this is simply a spacer that is inflated above the top of the humeral head. The balloon then pushes the ball back down into the socket and balances the joint forces. Over the course of several months and years, this balloon eventually dissolves and is replaced by a layer of scar tissue. Studies have shown a significant improvement in motion following the placement of the spacer. I should be clear again that this is not an attempt to repair any tendons. At times, we will repair the nearby bicep tendon doing something called a bicep tenodesis. However, aside from that, when we do a balloon spacer, we purposely avoid repairing any tendons to the bone. This allows a more rapid recovery of motion with much fewer restrictions. As opposed to a full rotator cuff repair or a tendon transfer, which involve three months of restrictions, the balloon generally allows full strengthening exercises after five to six weeks. This can be a very attractive option to someone who has a massive irreparable tear. Also, it can be a great option in those who have had a failed attempt at a rotator cuff repair. We know that at least 15% of rotator cuff repairs can fail for various reasons. Each time we repair the tendon, it can take six months to fully recover from the surgery. 
that time can be very costly. Especially in people over the age of 70, the failure rates can be even higher, leading some people, like the previously mentioned Barbara Corcoran, to choose this much quicker option. Speaking of quicker, this surgery is one of the simplest and quickest surgeries I do. It literally takes me about 15 minutes to perform the balloon spacer procedure. We simply measure the size of the tendon tear, place the device, and then inject saline into it, making sure that it unfurls properly. That's pretty much it. We can immediately see the cushion effect as we passively rotate the shoulder. In this surgical video, you can see the humeral head rotating down below. The balloon can be seen just above it, right here. The space is evident since the balloon is clear. Of course, we often perform a bicep tenodesis at the same time, which can add some time to the procedure and several weeks of weightlifting restrictions while the bicep heals. So what are the results? Prior to its FDA approval in the United States, the Stryker InSpace balloon had been used for over 10 years in Europe and other regions. The clinical trials showed promising results both short and medium term. Multiple studies have been published showing an 80% reduction in pain. Studies have reported about 73 to 80% patient satisfaction with the results. Not every study has been supportive, however. A 2022 study called the START REACTS trial published in Lancet compared a group of patients who had the in-space balloon to a group who had just an arthroscopic debridement and bicep tenotomy. That's where they just cut the bicep tendon to reduce the friction on the damaged portion. At one year, they found no benefit of the balloon spacer over the simple debridement and bicep tenotomy. Even though both groups had patients who benefited, the study found that overall scores were better in the group who did not have the balloon. Despite the study's conclusion that the balloon subjects had no benefit, the patients themselves rated their results higher when they got the balloon compared to when they did not. This was not a statistically significant difference. This was unlikely to be a placebo effect though because in the double line study, the patients were not told whether they got the balloon or not. Very few downsides or risks have been reported for the in-space balloon spacer. This device is made of a biodegradable material which eventually completely dissolves. In the previously mentioned START REACTS trial, adverse events were reported in both groups. The most common adverse events were exacerbation or persistence of shoulder pain or loss of motion. Some patients required a cortisone injection or developed stiffness after the surgery. Serious adverse events were defined as persistent pain or requiring another surgery. That happened in two of the 56 patients who had the balloon spacer or roughly 4% of the time. Also, keep in mind that when we place the spacer, it is not an attempt to repair the muscles or tendons. It is simply a mechanical recentering of the humerus that allows the other muscles to do their job. Other options like a tendon transfer or a partial rotator cuff repair with an allograft patch have a longer recovery period but ultimately may give more strength. I don't think this balloon spacer is for everyone. It is, however, a very nice option for those who have weakness and pain related to a high riding humerus, which is due to a massive irreparable rotator cuff tear. For those who want to avoid the usual six months to recover from a tendon transfer or a dermal capsule reconstruction or the invasiveness of a reversed total shoulder replacement, the in-space balloon can offer a quicker recovery period with good results in about 80% of patients. I would usually recommend this for patients who are over the age of 70 or those with medical conditions that might make a full rotator cuff repair a less desirable option. In a future video, we will discuss the most common type of rotator cuff tears and how we can fix them. For this and other information about shoulder and arm health, please subscribe and don't forget to like and share so others can benefit from the video. Take care of your shoulders and we'll see you in the next video.